All right, next thing, frequency. The way wireless works is the FCC, you guys know the FCC is, right? Federal Communications Commission. Federal government regulates the airwaves. Since these radio frequencies are what's considered a public good, the FCC is there to make sure they're used in a proper way. They will license what they call spectrum. And spectrum just means a portion of the airwaves is sort of set aside for you. And I want to talk about some of the spectrum that the FCC sets aside. I'm not going to draw the whole spectrum. It starts really low down here. So down here there's like TV, FM, and there is AM radio. So the oldest technologies generally got in the lowest frequency ranges. A while back they had an unlicensed band that was in the 900 megahertz range. And you could get a handheld cordless phone. Anybody have one of those at their house anymore? We were very excited by a handheld cordless phone because that meant it didn't have a wire sticking to it. You could walk around the house with your phone. This is unlicensed. The FCC basically said, here's a little segment of the spectrum and we'll give it away and you can do whatever you want with it. And one of the things they did with it was make cordless phones. A while later, the FCC decided to make another one unlicensed spectrum in the 2.4 gigahertz range. This is also unlicensed. A lot of stuff ended up in here. We have Bluetooth and the big one we use mostly is Wi-Fi or 802.11. Okay. Then we had another s uh, segment, 5.0 gigahertz, also unlicensed. And this is sort of, it's pretty new that people have been using this. And we'll just put, it is relatively empty. And this is where 802.11n or AC is located. So if you get a newer access point here, so if you buy a new access point, you'll be able to operate in the five gigahertz range. So that's pretty awesome. Oh, and by the way, we have these handsets here, and we have handsets here, and we have handsets here, okay? So the people that make those telephone wireless handsets, they use all these spectrums, or, yeah. So what does this do? Well, the first handset I had, just to tell you my story of the day, first handset I had I got when I graduated college and this handset would take me, I could take it outside. I could go outside my house, outside, and I could go down the block. And it worked great, okay? You could go down the block, over to the neighbor's house, go inside, all while carrying on the same conversation. A little while later, I ended up getting a handset up here this handset would pretty much work within the house and it would work on the front porch. Okay. I've never had one of these, but I know these will work in the house only. You have to be pretty close to your base station to get that one to work. All right. In my house, anyway. Well, let me talk about the differences between these. What happens with lower frequency? Okay, low frequency can wrap around and go through Uh, what are we going to call this? Matter? <laughs> For lack of a better term, right? Well, this is matter. So there's atoms in here, right? Protons, neutrons, everything else. A low frequency signal will tend to travel through 
a wall, for example. Let's draw this as if it's a wall. Okay, so we got a wall here. And these are all my little atoms of gypsum inside my sheetrock. A higher frequency, well, I'll just draw it here. So a higher frequency, the waves are closer together and they will tend to hit stuff. And if they hit something, they will bounce off. Okay? I'm sure you can recognize that some of them will still get through, and so we might have a little bit of a weaker, oops, I'm not drawing it right. This should be just going right through. Some of it will still get through, but some will bounce off. But it's more likely to bounce it off. We'll just put bounces off more, all right? So generally speaking, the lower, the better. This happened with um, the light waves too when we talked about our fiber optic cable. We like infrared light better than visible spectrum or ultraviolet light. But generally speaking, the lower the better. And you've heard this probably too. If you think about AM radio, if you go out at night and you flip on your AM radio, you have the possibility of hearing a very, a station from a very long ways away. Okay? FM radio won't get you that much distance. You might get, you know, 50 miles away, 100 miles away maybe with FM. TV about the same way. So just to note up here, TV is down here in these lower ranges, about 700 megahertz. And what they're doing with TV now is they're trying to kick people off of these bands. Okay? So they want to kick them off and get the, the FCC wants to sell this spectrum to other, like cell phone companies and stuff. They just made a ton of money on it. The last time, you know, when, they, when we went digital, we made a lot of money on it. All right, so let's talk about band for just a second. So if you have a band, you will have a operating range in your band. So I'll just show here. This would be an FM radio station. So if I go between 88.0 and 88.2, if that's the band that I've been given, I get a license for it from the FCC. Whoop, okay. So the FCC says I can broadcast on this range, for example, in Norfolk. That means my radio station is going to be at 88.1. That's what you're going to tune into. But I can broadcast on this whole frequency. Okay? FM radio normally just uses the whole frequency for its signals. The band width here is between 88.0 and 88.2 megahertz, so it's 200 kilohertz. Okay? So that's my band width. You all have heard of high bandwidth connection, right? So what you should be thinking now is, oh, here's where bandwidth comes from. Why do I want a bigger band? Because this 200 kilohertz here determines how much data I can transmit. Okay? It hover, it's around this. It's actually a little more in terms of bits per second. And so, for example, I might be able to get, I don't know, let's say I can get 300 kilobits per second out of that, right? So that my bandwidth is 200 kilohertz, and I can do signaling in this band such that I can get about 300 kilobits per second. So that's just kind of a relationship there. What if I wanted, if, you know, 300 kilobits per second is not that great, so I'll, let's say I wanted to go to 600 kilobits per second. Well, what I'm going to need is more bandwidth, right? This, by the way, is what's called a narrow band, right? And you've heard of a broad band connection. That means you have a lot wider band that you can transmit on. That's awesome. I love doing this on TV because then I can say that's awesome. Hey, it's Steve from Johns Holler. I'm just wondering what, what certain stations have certain wattages and uh, 
And yes. The more powerful stations tend to be picked up and all that. Oh yeah, let me just note that. I'm not sure the same or not. Okay, so speaking As of... As for Watts, well, I just don't know. <laughs> all right, let me get you going on this. So, for example, here I have 200 kilohertz is my bandwidth. My signal, you guys remember our signal to noise ratio? You remember that, right? That has a lot to do with how many bits per second I can transmit. The signal is how you measure the wattage. All right? So someone that can transmit a higher wattage is going to get more bits per second and they're going to be able to go a longer distance. We'll just put distance here. So you might, it's interesting to note if you are driving, for example, say from here to Richmond, if you stick to the commercial channels, they all transmit at about the same signal strength. You'll notice that commercial channels in the lower end of the band, so the ones that are around 90, those will, you'll be able to pick the Norfolk stations up further than the Norfolk stations that are up in the high end of the range, so the 107s and the 106s. So they'll fade off faster because these lower frequency signals just travel further. They well, I don't know. Well, I'm Richmond. Well, I'm somewhere near Richmond, well, in Chesterbro County, and I can pick up 106.9. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Is that a, a Norfolk station? <laughs> it just depends on uh, partly where their station is located, the transmission tower. And it does depend yes. on the wattage. Especially with the AM radio, it's the same way. The really long distance signals are allowed to have a high wattage. That doesn't have a lot to do with us because we're kind of stuck in wattage. Let's, so let's just move on with this.